Good morning, fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Today we continue to look at the book of Jonah with verses 11 through 17 of the first chapter. This Holy Spirit writes, Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea grew more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up and hurl me into the sea. For the sea will quiet down for you, for I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to get back to dry land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them. Therefore they called out to the Lord, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not on us innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and hurled him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So continuing on, the great theme of the book of Jonah is that nothing is as it should be. Uh, this great, this prophet of the Lord doesn't want to do what the Lord has called him to do. He refuses to speak the word of the Lord. Uh, these pagan fishermen, these pagan sailors, uh, who should have nothing to do with the Lord, they're the ones who fear the Lord and uh, pray to him and ask him to have mercy on them. Because Jonah tells basically tells them to kill him. Uh, that's what he wants. He want, he would rather die than go do what the Lord has called him to do. Uh, so he calls on these sailors to end his life. And they recognize that that would be murder. And, uh, you know, their immediate reaction is not to kill him, to throw him over into the sea, but to row as hard as they can back to shore. But when that doesn't work because the storm is too hard, they eventually have to say, okay, we have to throw him over, but we don't want his blood on our hands. He's an innocent man, more or less. Uh, so they pray to the Lord and ask that he would prevent that from happening. And he answers their prayers. These pagan uh, sailors, these men who pray to other gods, finally pray to the one true God, and he answers their prayer prayers and prevents them from sin. And that leads us to the big fish, the great fish, as the text says. Uh, there's no particular reason to think it's any kind of species, uh, specific species. You know, you can argue over wh whether it was like a gray whale or, I don't know, some jig giant shark or something. The point is, God appointed this fish to preserve Noah's life and to give us this image of Christ uh, being lowered into the ground. Uh, just as Christ was lowered into the ground, into his tomb, so Jonah went down into the seas, into the belly of this fish, and for three days and three nights stayed there until the Lord called him back up, just as Christ was raised up as well. Uh, Christ, I think, refers to uh, uh, his death and resurrection uh, a couple times in the Gospel of Matthew as the sign of jo Jonah, and he's obviously referring to this story. With that, let us pray. O Lord, God of hosts, sanctify us with your spirit, that we may hate evil and never pursue it, but instead love good and seek it always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend for all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 